From fair pricing to Thursday night Dungeons and Dragons hangouts, here are the things that make a great comic book store. The best comic book shops around display these elements in their business strategy. I've come up with eight things that you really want to see out of a good local comic book shop. My challenge to you all is come up with a ninth for me. Pop it in the comments down below. Speaking of a great comic book shop, the winner is going to get this set of rarer dynamite virgin variants, including Garbage Pail, Vampirella, and more. Let's get right to it, shall we? I think the first thing that you want to see from your local shop is probably variety. I've been all around the East Coast and we see a lot of comic book shops, some of them more varied than others. The ones I tend to like the best are the ones that've got new releases, graphic novels, absolute editions, omnibus, Pokemon cards, magic cards, even games, toys, etc. It's these places that have a lot of this variety that could be a defining factor to making a customer want to come back time and time again. Even shops dedicated to being more like one thing, specifically toy shops, do quite well when they branch out into other smaller categories. If you're a comic book shop, have the new stuff, but have a little bit of an older section. This variety not only will get more people back in the store, but it'll start to dip their hands in the other elements that you've got going on. For each category, I'm gonna give you a great example of a shop that actually does this. So I'm gonna award variety to Brave New Worlds. You walk in there, you're greeted by six scale, fourth scale toys, you got Catan board games on the wall. You got new books and everything. You've got a back book section. Variety, baby. They got it. Next up, we got to talk about this one. This is a huge one for the comic book community. How about an organized shop? I am not saying you can't have dollar bin sections that aren't organized. That's frankly a lot of fun. But if you're going to have some organization, you should have your new books with your new books. You should have your back bins priced neatly, maybe alphabetized or at least by DC or Marvel, and then have a section of dollar bins where you can do the more diving. Having some organization goes a long way. I have been to some shops where I'm faced with basically an entire warehouse. There's absolutely no order and it's just pandemonium. And me personally, I haven't gone back to those shops. It's just too disorganized, especially for people that have limited time on their hands. Sure, if you got a whole day, maybe it's not so bad, but for the rest of us, little organization goes a long way. This next one's an underrated one. How about having a good website? A lot of comic book shops are kind of smaller time and they're not going to have the resources to do a website, but when they do, it goes a long way way man yo my local comic book shop in doylestown pa cyborg one has an absurdly good website i don't know how they manage the time to do all it but they take pictures of all the kind of bigger stuff that comes in the shop you can almost see the new releases even before you get to the shop because they've photo they've taken the time to photograph everything you can save the trip and just order straight from there or a range of pickup. A good website goes such a long way to making it easier for the customer. And it's frankly just awesome to see what you might have before we take the drive. I've had a few comic book shops that a good website was a little bit of the cherry on top when deciding to go to them. And it is something that's gonna be more prevalent in the future. Also, having some sort of social media presence, Instagram or Facebook, maybe even your own YouTube channel, is great. I love when I see that extra step, that extra reach from comic book shops. It makes us feel a little bit closer, brings us together a little bit better. I love my local comic book shops, Facebook and Instagram pages. My buddy Greg from Phantasm Comics has his own YouTube channel. I love watching his stuff. It's just an extra touch, man. It goes a long way. Okay, this next one is so important and it seems like a no-brainer, but some places don't do this. Having a program for trading in or bringing your books in and getting cash. Believe it or not, some shops simply don't do this. The going rate for bringing your comics in is typically anywhere from five cents all the way up to around 20 cents on the higher end I've seen per comic. Usually, the places you go will give you like 10 cents a comic. Some shops might be a little tight on budget and they just don't have the capital to take your books in at the moment and that's fine. But some shops, they just, don't really take in any collections unless it's a pre-met up thing. And I think there's something special about being able to walk into a comic book shop and saying, hey, I got a short box here. What can you give me for it? Or being able to say, you know, I've got this lab here. Can I trade in for some store credit? Goes a long way. 
I'm a little pampered in that most of my PA in New Jersey ones do this, but I know a couple that don't, and I know that people were a little bit bummed out about it. This next one is another no-brainer, but actually there's a good number of ones that don't do this. This to me is absolutely a deciding factor on whether I actually return to this place, and that is being flexible on offers. If you're selling one comic book for $100, that should be your price. 100 bucks plus tax or whatever, that's the price, good deal. If you're buying 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 comics from the shop, maybe sweeten the deal a little bit, throw in like a small little free book. Or if someone says, hey, I'll buy all this, can you maybe take off 5% or can you give me this free book? A good comic book shop is gonna be able to actually meet that and understand that by that extra move, they're guaranteeing a happy customer's return. There are books that you can't go lower, I understand. There are definitely books that you can't go lower. That is your final offer. You remember what you paid for it and you, you have to make your money. And we as buyers need to remember that these comic book shops we love so much do need to make money or they are gonna go away. But bulk order, certain situations where you can clearly tell that the book is priced a little bit over fair market value, be able to do some talk, have a little flexibility, it goes a long way. Me personally, I do not return to comic book shops that don't have flexibility with their pricing. Number three, this is an interesting one and my buddy describes this story a little bit better than me, but if it's in the shop, make sure it's actually for sale. I'll explain what I mean. I have a friend, it's actually Joe from 360 Comics. I'll put a quick link to his channel if you wanna check it out. He may have even made a video telling about this, so I apologize if this is a repeat, but essentially, he spent one afternoon, something like two, three hours in this place looking at comics. The stuff wasn't priced, it was all disorganized. And there was a Spider-Man book, I want to say it was a Spider-Man book, and they told him, oh, I don't know what the price is, the owner isn't around. But the thing is, he didn't live anywhere close to there, so it's not like he can just come back. He spent hours trying to get the books, and he found the book in the shop and wants to pay for it wants to give them his money. And long story short, I'm pretty sure the end of it was they just couldn't do it. They got the ma the manager on the phone. Uh, he was like looking up prices online on his end and he was way off or something like that. Comic book shop owners, if you've got stuff out for sale, make sure that it's actually for sale. Second to last, probably the most important one on this list and it is the most polarizing one. Kind of similar to that last one, but never price books at the counter. Oh boy, do I mean this one. I have a video, it's actually one of my most popular videos. I went down to Virginia. I had a book that I wanted to get and I brought it to the counter and they raised the price on me because they recognized me from my YouTube channel and said that they remembered me talking about the book and therefore it should be more valuable. You just super lost my business, dude. <laughs> that whole super lazy thing of not actually pricing any of your books and saying that they're just gonna look it up on the computer when you finally get to the counter, A, that's extremely time consuming once you get to the counter. That absolutely has to be done first and it is a dirty move to do that at the counter especially when it's in the dollar bin or something, and then you bump it up to a $20 book just because you put it in the wrong bin in the first place, that's messed up. And I still hear stories of this all the time. I actually hope that comic book shop owners are watching this. Hopefully this video gets some traction and this one gets seen by the YouTube algorithm because comic book shop owners need to remember that one. Don't be doing that pricing at the counter. Make sure you got the right prices on the books in the bins before you even go through that because you're gonna piss people off, man. Just a reminder, don't forget to give me one more reason. Give me a ninth reason down below in the comments. The winner will win this set of Dynamite Virgin variants. And the most important thing, speaking of Dynamite actually, be friendly. I apologize that I can't remember the name of the shop, but there's this one I went to in Delaware. They were amazing. It was the super cool chick. There was like a dog in the shop, but she was so friendly that even though I was just passing by that one day, now like two years ago, it makes me want to come back. This chick was like giving out free comics to a kid right behind me. She was cutting me deals that I didn't even ask for. I hadn't even started to negotiate. 
How many times have you guys walked into a comic book shop, maybe it's a guy that's been there a little too long, 10, 15, 20, 25 years, and they're smug as hell. That is so off-putting, man. You saw all these guys that condescendingly talk to you and can't believe you're asking such a simple question and they seem so bothered by you. That does nothing. The extra touches and a friendly face really will make you keep coming back, man. Even if you're not so up to date on these other reasons, if you're at least friendly, that is gonna really help your business model. Buyers, sellers both, we need to remember what it is like to be kind to one another. Be friendly. There's a world full of assholes. Let's try to keep our community free of them. The closest FedEx to me, the guy that works the counter, complete douche. Because of that, I go somewhere else. Despite the much longer drive, I don't use this business anymore. Same thing with comic book shops, man. You have a bad experience because maybe you even had a deal that went well and went great, but it was a little awkward and wasn't exactly a friendly experience. What's the chance you're actually going to return there? Having a worse deal but a friendly experience is better, I swear. Anyway, all, just a little food for thought. Thank you so much for watching. Keep loving your comic book shops. Support the local businesses, man. Don't forget to mention your favorite comic book shops down below. Let's give them some free advertising. And as always, keep on hunting.